Welcome to the Community Television of Santa Cruz County regular meeting of the Board of Directors for February 26, 2018. Will the Secretary please call the roll? Chair Gudger? Here. Director Fisher? Here. Director Hall? Here. Director Rand? Here. Director Wade? Here. Director Mannheim? Director Majors? Director O'Driscoll? Here. Director Owen? Thank you. So this is the point where we have oral communications. Anyone can address the board about issues not on the agenda. Seeing none, are there any late additions to the agenda or deletions to the consent or regular agendas? No. All right, let's move on to the consent agenda. And we seem to have lost the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> because he opened the door to our hey, Tom. 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 Right. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We call it a grand entrance. <laughs> so the reason I, I'm looking for Tom or Joe <laughs> is because they are Joe on the finance committee. And Tom was there. Joe was not. So the consent agenda is where we are. We have the minutes for the board meeting from last board meeting in January. We have the finance committee and the fund development, fund development committee minutes from February 22nd. And we have a recommendation from the Finance Committee to accept the January 2018 financial report. Tom, would you like to say anything about that, number seven? Um, the only thing I would say is we had a good discussion about finances. We are still in the, for the year, in the black for the operation here at Satellite, which is a good thing. And um, we also had a, uh, conversation about budgeting for next year, um, sort of trying to anticipate what our revenues will be here. So we, we're starting to look at budgeting as well. But um, it's a good report. We're in the black, and that continues to be a reassuring thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry I was late. That's okay. Uh, in the meantime, I've lost two directors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise I'm not leaving. <laughs> And the okay. I think we're all coming back. We're all so were there any questions on any of the three minute items? The minutes on the three minutes that are on the agenda? <coughs> I no? just wanted to comment. I agree with Tom's comment on the last finance committee about kind of the facilities cash flow. So I thought it was a reasonable comment. It was good to find out the background information on it. Thank you. So if there's no further discussion, do we have a motion for the consent agenda? I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. I'll go ahead and second that. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. I'll call the vote on the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Opposed or abstentions. abstentions. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> My brain's a little off. If not, then we'll move on to the regular agenda. The first item is actually the oral report of the executive director. A written report is in the packet. Okay. Well, uh, for February, um, you've just heard that we're in the block. And uh, we are uh, in profit for February. It's, um, um, which is a good thing. Today, I'm last, I think it was last Thursday and today when I was here, there were many more people in the co-working area in the open area than usual. Today, there were several people working in the office and there was someone doing a podcast too in our little sound booth. So that was, that's really nice to see. I came here and I had to park in the back. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, the front was full. Great. So that was very nice. Um, and uh, we do, we did just, I just discovered, sadly, that two uh, people are leaving their offices. So we will be starting to, uh, we'll be starting those up again. So we have what, what the good thing is, we have two nice big offices for teams that are coming available in the, in the, um, shortly. So the, if anyone's listening is looking for a big office, we have two. Um, At least right now, they go fast. They do, they are, because they're very cool. They have lovely windows and, and um, they're very nice offices. So um, as uh, moving on to other paid services that we have, closed captioning, it's like a saga, isn't it? Um, so uh, we, we found the reason that uh, we weren't getting the captioning to appear. We've been captioning, but we've had to do it all in the background. We caption it and we show it later. We haven't been able to get the caption live. So we got the captions to go live, 
but they were duplicated. So it's like, hi, 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 you're your, your supervisor. So we, um, <laughs> we could not figure out how to make that stop. So we have um, figured out why, well, and we have one more step. So we have several pieces of equipment. They're kind of in a line. And all of them have many menus and a lot of choices in the menus. So it's a menu choice that's not jiving that <laughs> is the issue. So they've been going through lists and lists and lists. And um, uh, we have Nick coming this weekend. He's moving to Sacramento. So he's going to come down and see if he can solve the problem. And, uh, and uh, Lynn is working with ENCO, the place where we got our equipment, to see if they know what might be wrong. They think it's, they're pretty sure it's a switch, but we don't know which one. So um, we'll get that handled. <laughs> In the meantime, we're captioning shows um, for, for rebroadcast. So we'll, we'll get the live thing. It's just a matter of time. And um, let's see, the uh, government meeting services, we did about 20 meetings in February. And for documentation this <coughs> month, we did a big project. We do it every year. Um, it's the SCCAO Wrestling Championship. So this was uh, Victor's first chance to take out the nice big uh, mobile TriCaster that you guys approved for him a while back. Mm -hmm. And it was great. He set it up in no time. He said it took us 20 minutes to set up, which is very lucky because the, the event was going, um, the, the uh, I guess, what are the, what is it? The, the early rounds where people get kind of knocked out we don't shoot those, we just shoot the end. And so the, the early rounds went long, but the, but the end ones had to start on time, so they actually only had 30 minutes to set mm. up. So he was able to pull that off because of this equipment, and we were able to do the job we were hired to do, which was good, and um, it, it looked very good. I saw it today. So we're, we're happy about that. And the equipment rails are picking up. We had in, kind of, you know, you know, it depends on where you mark this off, but between January and February, kind of those weeks, the center of, or the end of January, the, the beginning of February, we had about $1,000 worth of rentals from professionals. So that was good. We usually have a lot of rentals by our own membership, but the professionals actually pay a real price. So that's much better for us. And it looks like that's uh, really picking up. So that, that's a good thing. Um, we are renewing our, oh, in, under the PEG part of our uh, financials, we are renewing our contract with the, the city, uh, the county of Santa Cruz this year, and the city as well. We got a three-year contract in uh, 2015, which was good, because the year before it had been a year contract, so we were really happy to get that three, and it went zip by. Now it's time to renegotiate it, and we're gonna have a new contract We've already done a pre-meeting uh, about that with um, Kevin Bowling, who's our kind of our, our point person at the county, and um, his team. And it was a good meeting. It was very positive. And um, we just touched base on, on where we are and what we would, what mm, the, the steps of this process that we go through. We actually create quite a bit of content for them before, um, as that happens. So um, we expect the process to go pretty smoothly. It was a very nice meeting. And they're very happy with what we're doing. Um, under equipment and facilities, we purchased a few new pieces of equipment. Um, uh, Keith and Matilda had an idea that people might uh, be interested in doing their own videos with their own kind of equipment that they can have. And the camera of choice these days is a phone <laughs> or, or a tablet. So we bought some fun uh, pieces of equipment that can be added to these things to get a more quality product if you want to use your phone. Because certainly, like, my phone has uh, like a 256 gigabyte chip in it. So you, you could put definitely a lot of video in there. So we got um, some tripods, tripod adapters, um, a little kind of preamp thing so you can plug in a real XLR professional mic to your, to your phone and uh, parts to hold that on and, and uh, several other little things. We also got some lenses for phones that are really fun. They come on this giant clothespin looking thing and you just clip it right over the thing and you have a fisheye lens and a close-up lens so you don't have to get it close <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> and, uh, you can just shoot from here. So um, that those are fun things. We're gonna do a class or having um, one of my staff from CMAP is coming to teach that class on how to make phones and uh, March 8th, uh, Keith right? and Matilda did a, <coughs> uh, sorry? On March 8th. It, oh yes, March 8th, yes, save the date. 
And so that'll be a great class for people. It's like a two-hour class for people to look, you know, they can see how to make a little more professional video with their phone. And uh, Keith and Matilda will probably tell you all about the class that they did. And they, they did a brief a brief introduction to this. And um, so um, we're excited about that. It's kind of a different, you know, we always focus on being professional and having the best and the cutting edge stuff. So people who learn here go out in the real world and find what they expect. <laughs> but um, this is a whole other group of people who are doing stuff on their own and they're making YouTube videos and, you know, they have an audience. So we can help them just do a little bit better. On our building, uh, we're continuing to improve the look and feel because you haven't seen anything yet. You're probably wondering, last week they said they were doing something and it still looks the same. But um, by the conference room, you'll see a, a test of a mural that we're putting on the wall. You can take a look at that. It's uh, what we're doing is an ivy covered wall and I've been working with a wallpaper specialist to see what kind of mural we can put on that wall with the texture that's on it that works and that will go all the way to the ceiling to the floor and a couple other things. So I got a great sample from him and we're real excited about that. So before we proceed, we're gonna repaint the uh, windows and doors, mm -hmm. the window um, sashes and doors. And then, um, then we'll go ahead. So probably by next month when you come back, you will see You'll see that, and we're working to make the kitchen a little more fun. Boy, the county building has a fun kitchen. That was great. We went in there on our visit, and it was just really lovely. So, um, and what they were doing, it was kind of fun to see it because some of the ideas they had are the ideas that I was given by our experts, so that makes sense. And um, we're working on uh, getting a couple of things going in there that'll be interesting. We're looking on at to adding an island to the kitchen so that there's extra seating and more storage. Storage is a problem. If you go in the kitchen, there's just stuff everywhere. And everybody uses that stuff. So we can't really put it away, but we need a place where it can be accessible so that everybody can use it because we share our kitchen with another business and you know they like to use the toaster oven and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we think the island will work, that we can have things that pull out and you can use the toaster and then push it back in. So the idea is to make it useful and still neat. And then the, that would provide also more seating. So um, we're looking into a couple options for that. And we're also researching patio furniture for the front door. There are two little nooks on our front porch where people could sit outside and work if we had tables there. So um, Alana is looking into those. We have patio tables on the back patio. And it will be sort of like that, but smaller. So they'd be, you know, bolted to the cement, but they would be, you know, kind of bench table connected things that you could slide in. But a lot of people have asked if they can go sit outside and lots of people make phone calls from out there. You know, it's really nice. You sit in the sun and it's warm out there, but right now you have to pace around. So tables might be nice. Um, uh, now I'm moving on to communications. Um, Keith alerted me to a, a really, uh, a great event that was um, Google Partners, Google Google Partners with an ad agency in Aptos. And so they came to talk about their program. Uh, and they're, they do a Google race ad agencies and they can see what they're doing. So they try to see how successful they are. And if they are successful over the long term, they like to partner with them. And then they offer them a lot of special deals and special information and information and programs that are not available to everybody else and research that they have that's not available to others. And so um, right in Aptos is a, an organization that they partner with. So the two of them came to um, a conference center and, and talked about uh, what it means to be certified and that they will take that certification away and they have in the past. So it's not like you work your way up to it and then you're good forever. They, Google keeps an eye on them. And it was very interesting to hear from the Google people how they do advertising, how it works and why it works. And then, um, then we, I heard from the ad agency and I had two meetings with them since. I met with them kind of on the spot to talk about what we do and whether it's applicable because they had a specialist with them that works on um, nonprofit um, grants. So nonprofits can get grants in Google ad dollars. So you can get, we could qualify for $10,000 a month in advertising via Google. Um, if you know, well, all non nonprofits are eligible, and so I talked to them about if we could qualify and if what we offer is something that makes sense to work with ads, and they all thought yes. So um, I had a second meeting with them uh, to see how we might, what we would need to do to qualify for that, and there are things we will want to change on our website that are no big deal, really, just different language. And so I think I think it all looks like we can do it. 
Um, I spoke with them just before I left for New York last week, and they promised to have something to me this week because I told them we needed to make a difference by the end of our fiscal year. So they are they are um, hurrying. <laughs> so we will. I'll meet with them again soon, and I'll let you know how it goes. But it looks very good. I think it could be a great thing if we had. Gosh, if we had ten thousand dollars a month to advertise with, that would make a heck of a difference. So um, we'll be looking for a plan from them next week to review, and. Um, Speaking of grants, uh, we were able to award an equipment grant to um, Aptos High School, and um, we delivered those things um, just a couple weeks ago. And there's a picture in your in your report about that, and that is um, jo Joel Donhoff getting all that <laughs> equipment, mm -hmm. and um, it's going to be very exciting, I think, for the for that school in particular because they do a lot of creative things in video already. So giving them this equipment, I think, is going to launch them. It's going to really raise the bar for them and they'll be able to do some great programming for us, and it'll be a great learning experience for them. So that is my report for February. Just a quick question. Uh, when you mentioned that uh, you were able to rent $1,000 of equipment to professionals, is that kind of due to the outreach you've been doing to the professional communities and their various groups and things like that? I think it is that, and they're talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons we're going to do the Google thing, because we can target those guys. Yeah. We can say we're looking for video people <coughs> in our zip code if we want to. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, they're kind of hard to find because they don't have a, they're not, there's no hub for them. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons I'm looking to the Google thing. But yeah, other like people like, um, you, I don't know if you know Ian Slattery, but he used to be my, my um, uh, director of programming in, and senior producer in Gilroy, and he, um, his, he, he left that job and is freelancing in town now. And he's, he rents equipment from us, and I can see people he... Um, yeah, I'm just curious, because yeah, it was nice to see. Yeah, it's, I think it's people he knows, and then we have a couple other producers who rent equipment here, and, I, and that's picked up since they've come, so it's probably people that they know. People are just, like, learning <coughs> about it. Yeah, yeah, I, could, I, I <coughs> looked at the names in particular and backed out all the members, so I could tell how much actually was written by people who aren't members, and that was really exciting. That's a lot of that. I look, I look over, you know, every once in a while, I, I have to do, it's kind of hard to get that information out of that report, so I can't do it always, but I thought it was worthwhile to take a look because I saw the number it jumped up, and sure enough, it was a lot of professionals. Good. I'd like to also point out that two of the people that rented equipment this last month were people that came from our coworkers. Oh, really? Oh. So they found out about it by being in here using their coworkers. That's a nice little cross Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It is, and that's really, would, it'd be great if we could um, energize that, if we could have a lot of different people in, in this discipline working here and using our things and making connections amongst each other. Okay. Any more questions, Rebecca? That's great. Let's move on to the, the bid for the floor. So I can give the background, or you can give the background. As you can see, the floor <laughs> in our studio is, is terrible. <laughs> you know that? Not to put too fine a point on it. <laughs> and we have been trying for a long time to find concrete contractors that can fix it for us. Clearly, the people that were part of the original bid that were supposed to have fixed this floor for us didn't succeed, so we know it's not a simple job. Um, Becca says we've talked to five companies. I mean, I've tried to call a dozen companies at least, and most of them say, I don't do jobs that small, I don't do that kind of work, they don't return their calls. They it's don't want to repair someone else's floor. They, they've got a million of them. Yeah. So a while back, let's see if there's a date on this. Oh, yeah, it's back in June of 2017, we did get one bid from a, a company out of San Jose that does this kind of stuff all over the state. And if you see that bid, that's the first one in the packet. It came in at $20,632. And we decided not to bring that one to the board at that time <laughs> because we didn't feel it was a, a, I mean, we didn't feel it was a price that we were willing to pay. I think that's a fair statement. So we continued to search for companies that could do it, and we had you know, lots of failures in finding anyone who would come in. But uh, the person on camera one, Jim Russo, mentioned uh, the company that gave us the second bid. He knows a person there. Uh, they came in, 
Uh, he seemed very knowledgeable. He immediately got out his meter, measured the moisture all over the floor, took measurements, and right away gave me a bid. And that's the second bid you see here, mm -hmm. which is you know, a little yeah. more than half of the first bid. Mm -hmm. uh, Becca has checked into the company also. Uh, they're local. They're, the Better Business Bureau rates them A+. Plus. They're certified by two trade organizations. The Monterey Bay Aquarium is a client. Um, and like I said, Jim knows the guy. If any has any questions about them, Jim is prepared to go to the mic and answer any questions if anyone wants to ask about them. Yes. The, uh, they're award-winning concrete guys. They compete in competitions, and um, they have done some really fabulous things at hotels and out in front of the aquarium. And they're, it's just the concrete is they clearly have a passion for it. I actually know who they are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For various reasons. Um, <laughs> no, not bad. Just I just had this is small <laughs> town. It was this is small the way town. You said it. it was <laughs> no, but my one qu uh, thought was is if anybody's watching this, this floor looks really flat to me. Oh, but it's you, not. Oh, I know, it's but not. you might want to just explain a minute to so if there is anybody, they understand why it's really important to have the floor in a proper working order. So this floor is actually poured in two pieces. Right underneath where we're sitting, right where I'm sitting, is a seam. Mm -hmm. And Becca and I were in here with tables and <laughs> levels and the long sticks. Long sticks. <laughs> and we measured this part of the floor is level. And this part of the floor is level. But when they meet, that's where the previous company tried to grind them. Mm -hmm. And so where they meet, they sort of come together, but it's really the swoop it's up kind of a peak to the other one. Now, the reason that's an issue, besides the fact that when you roll a camera over it, it bumps, mm -hmm. and if you, yeah, that's do, not good. if you want to do trucking and have a nice, smooth shot, we have tried to do it with that camera many times, mm -hmm. uh, you go over that bump and you lost it. But the big issue that pushes it for us is because we have the black curtain here, you can't see the green screen panels we have behind mm -hmm. it. But the green screen panels can be leveled. And they should meet. They ha their seams need to meet perfectly, or if you have a gap, then you don't get green screen coverage. You can't key it. So for professionals and even our, our public access producers that like to use the green screen, we need those panels to meet. And so the panels that go right over here where the seam is never meet. And you have to spend a lot of time twirling these dials on them to try and get them to meet. And if you have to move anything, then it's all off. And, and once they over. don't meet, everything else doesn't right. meet right. down the line. So you have all of these things sitting like this and like that. And there's holes, like dark holes. I was just kind of curious. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm glad glad I, you know, I know enough about this to know I don't know very much. So <laughs> we love to so do we, Okay. Do we know if you say they're both level? Are they also on the same level? In other no, words, one that's the problem. So in other words, one, one side's going to have to be raised up to the other side? Well, it turns out <laughs> for our needs, it doesn't have to be level, but it needs to be a very smooth, smooth thing. Yeah. And so when we talked to this concrete company, I was here, we were very clear. It doesn't have to be perfectly level, but it has to be perfectly smooth mm -hmm. and gradual. It has to be a plane, a yes. single plane. Right. And were they confident that they could deliver that? Yes. And so I did notice that the big difference between the two is that the first company was talking about bringing in leveling yes. cement. And they, they said the second company doesn't believe that's necessary to get the job done. Is that right, correct? Right, we're not going to level the whole floor. Okay. See, they were going to put, yeah. not, they were going to bring in 20 well, bags. Well, that's, that's the difference in the quote you know, right. as far as the yeah. pricing, for yeah. sure. Well, well, also, for us, it would be difficult because, you know, the minute you go into hotel, the doors go wrong. Yeah. 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 Oh, doors. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these bumps, so, you know, but they feel they can get it done without that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And another key, of course, besides the leveling, is making the floor black. It's important to be flat black so it doesn't reflect the lights and it blends mm -hmm. into everything. And since the key to professional production is using this space and paying us to use it, one of the big draws, I believe, is the green screen. From what I hear, a lot of the productions, I, what I see, a lot of the productions we get are green screen mm -hmm, productions. Mm -hmm, yeah. I think it's important for us to have green screen that works. And that's why we put in all these extra lights along here so we can use this wall here. And right. this, using this wall gets away from that, but it doesn't give you a corner. So this corner, for this corner to work, we've got to fix the floor. Otherwise, 
you can't get Now you got more information than you want. Well, I just thought <laughs> if somebody was sitting here like me, they would well. wonder if a flat floor is a flat floor and they're never perfect, but right. why not being perfect here is important. Now we know. That's great. Thanks for that. So that's so it. So you are you looking for a motion? I, w I would love it. This ahead, uh, even eleven thousand is over Becker's limit. So by one thousand, I would move it? approval yeah. of this expenditure in the eleven thousand dollar quote, the second quote the second. that Isn't we've been providing. Uh, can I second? Okay. Does it include tax money? Doesn't say. It's a slip schedule. Yeah. Hey, one, one thing now that the motion second, I hate to bring this up, but construction always is full of surprises. Would you mind giving, um, just as a thought, a 10% yeah. uh, contingency uh, for the executive director in consultation with the chair? That way if suddenly something's missed, we're mm -hmm. not back here mm -hmm. and they're in the middle of the project and there's Wait, a problem. I, mean, I don't want to go over 10 because yeah. it sounds like they know what they're doing. But some things, sometimes they change. So that's fine with me if it's fine with the second. Yes. Great. All right. Okay, so we have a first and second, and no questions, I guess. So I'll call for the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstention? Seeing none, we'll go on to the oral report of the Volunteer Advisory Exactly, and that's me. So a couple of things. First of all, um, we had a, a VAC meeting, a Volunteer Advisory Committee meeting. It was very uh, energetic. Uh, we actually talked about how to use more of Facebook and get people to know more about community television, uh, but also uh, some interesting things about how to use Facebook for streaming mm -hmm. of programs and all that. That was really, really interesting. A lot of us uh, learned a lot about it. Uh, we also, uh, because we had been talking about it, uh, we discussed that we needed some more testimonials. So people came up with, you know, we could have a crew, you know, a crew comes to the studio. They can say why they like, you know, and why they like doing this kind of work. Or you could have all audio people or, you know, all people who are doing camera, you know, doing something together. So we'll be working on that. And then um, we also approved uh, a new system of requesting the studio and getting studio supervisors. You know, we've been really working our volunteer coordinator, uh, Tweety Bone. I mean, she's been working extremely hard. And now that everyone is kind of getting used to how things work, and since we have some um, computer savvy people with Keith and Michael who are on the Volunteer Advisory Committee, we can set up a computer system where people can, you know, get a studio supervisor, then sign up for the studio uh, on their own and uh, take care of, of business that way. Uh, that would um, really help out with time saving for our volunteer coordinator. Um, then our uh, producers and director coordinator uh, led us to a green screen uh, workshop. Uh, two people, Ron and uh, Daniel, uh, showed people how to set up the green screen and um, David and Keith and Linda worked on how to uh, work on the TriCaster, the directing part of it. Uh, so it was a very uh, good thing, and we'll probably repeat that at some point. So our producers and directors uh, had a good time. And then, um, of course, we are still doing PSAs, and I think they're becoming more and more uh, uh, popular with people. Uh, I think we now have to kind of limit the, the amount, because we've had you know, seven or eight people wanted to come, and that's kind of a little bit much. So, but we have successful, every second Friday of the month, we still have public service announcements in here. Uh, you know, everybody gets about 30 minutes and people can do a lot uh, with the green screen and whatever pictures they bring in and some, you know, rehearse and others don't, but it's, it's a very interesting process. And then I'm gonna hand it over to Keith because we also did a orientation for nonprofit organizations for the first time 
and we have some show and tell. Oh, okay. So, um, is it okay if I move to item 11 or, or are we close the board chair? That's exactly what I'm hearing. Okay. <coughs> okay. <laughs> so, in order. last Friday we had uh, the nonprofit orientation, which has this cool picture here, which I, I don't know if Linda can get it or not, but um, I have the packet here and any board member wants to see it when we're done or now I can hand it around. Of the things we covered at the orientation and it's very interesting for us to have done this. Well, first off we did is things you can do today. So we made a point of the nonprofits know these are things that right now you can use community TV's resources to do. Upload videos, schedule a PSA day, send in a calendar slide for the community calendar. Because we wanted a, people when they left to know that they had they had something they could use our resources to help them with right away. And then we ended, we went through a lot of the stuff that's available here, but we ended up with helping nonprofits to write an effective PSA. So we had everyone get together and, and form small groups and work on that. And then we came in here and showed them how to use a uh, smartphone to tape a one minute PSA, how to upload it to YouTube and trim it. And even on a smartphone, you can trim your PSA. So we showed them how to do that. And we, we did three here, though most of the group stayed and did that and watched the three people be guinea pigs for it. <laughs> it worked out really well and then we just trimmed off the front, you know, so like we could do the three, two, one to start it and then we could just trim that off and when they ended, they could, if they went off and did something else, we could cut that part off. And I think that worked pretty well. Oh, yeah. good. They absolutely loved it. I mean, they couldn't say enough about how wonderful. And of course, Karen uh, wasn't, uh, I don't know, she put herself in charge and it was really nice. We had bagels and, 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 and cream cheese. And it, it was just a really pleasant atmosphere. And people were actually, I mean, a lot of these people didn't know each other. They came from different nonprofits. And some, some organization only sent one and others sent, sent three. But <coughs> we had like 15 people here. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up first in the conference room and he did the presentation and we talked with people and then you know they wrote in different groups and then they came in here. And we used those tools, you know, the, to, to hold your, your, your phone and put it on the tripod and, uh, and we didn't show the lenses because they're gonna get to see that in the classroom. Well, they wouldn't need them in here. They're no. more like for fun, right? Know, for so, but a bug or I mean, honestly, I mean, a lot of people stayed the whole time. Uh, I think maybe one or two people had to leave a little early because obviously it was a work day for them. But they just kept thanking us, and and we were very pleased. And Karen, Keith, and I, you know, led it, and uh, Keith did most of the work, and it was really, really pleasant. So and informative. A surprising thing that came out of it, it was clear that they got a lot out of the networking. And so we asked them, would they like to just have a nonprofit networking event? And they're, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure that's, uh, yeah, sure that's not within our mission, but it's how something they would, we could get them here and yeah, sort we of. Could see, we could do that again. They could all leave with something. They, they were thrilled. I was kind of concerned that when we turned them loose to help each other write a one-minute PSA, less than 140 words, that they would go, oh, you know, we don't want to do this. But they really loved it. It Good. worked well together. Cool. So oh, they were serious. I oh, mean, yeah. two, That's great. One, one group wanted to have it printed out so they could really read what they said, and another person practiced for a while. And, you know, That's right. You right. can't have the prompter there. <laughs> we, we didn't have to prompt it because, well, you know, right, you do it in the field. The phone. Right, you do right, it in the right. field. So yeah. some people said, can we use that telephone? They said, yeah, well, we are in the studio now, but when you're out in the field and you want to do things. But if you had two phones, you could, or an iPad and a course. phone. The exactly. iPad could be the yeah. prompter. Yeah. You could just use yeah. I meant to bring my PowerPoint tablet or something. How you could use the tablet. Yeah, yeah. you could use a tablet. I didn't. But anyway, it was okay. So if people watching from other nonprofits, if you suddenly start getting, date, getting inundated with calls for another That's workshop. That's right. We love that. Now, where should they call? Uh, well, they should email info at communitytv.org. Mm -hmm. Emails are preferred to phone calls. 
Yeah, yeah and if you great. if you do another one, I'd love to come too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll send them in. You want to say that one more time slowly? <laughs> <laughs> I-N-F-O, info at communitytv.org is the best place to contact us if you want info about what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and the, the, the thing also is that this was really an event where we fulfilled our mission 100%. I mean, we reached out to the community, we brought them here, we showed them the resources, we taught them some stuff, and we helped them to continue, you know, to communicate with us. We made something. So, yeah. we will see. We had a result. I think you might want to mention our meeting with the Tina Schulte, Assistant City Manager. Yes, I had that. Oh, you do? <laughs> I was wondering whether I should or not. Well, go ahead. I think yeah. it's important. They, they, everybody knows we're reaching out to every element of our community. So our contract, which is coming up, is with the city and county of Santa Cruz. And Becca mentioned our meeting with the IT director who is responsible for the contract at the county. And so thanks to Joe, we also met with Tina Schul, who is the assistant city manager of Santa Cruz, to discuss the upcoming contract. And she seemed... Well, I think the important right. thing is we just communicated all the things that have gone positive here. The building's in place, the volunteer network is in place, the finances are turning around. And I think that's important because generally all people hear is things go wrong mm -hmm. and they have to jump in. In this case, it was just an update that things have gone better and they were getting better. And I thought also it should be also to thank all the people who are making it better. Mm -hmm. And so it was a short meeting. We didn't you know, spend a lot of time, but uh, Compared to other times, I thought it was a good point to do it, and it was mm -hmm. good to talk to the county because you kind of get busy in your world and forget to reach out to other people sometimes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And one other thing I was going to mention is Becca showed a picture of delivering equipment to Aptos mm -hmm. High School. Um, Mr. Domhoff came in here, and we gave him some training on the trifles, and Tilda and I. And, uh, that was very interesting. It was fun playing around with the TriCaster Mini. I hadn't used the little Mini before. Um, it has a few differences, but it's a pretty nice little piece That's of kit. That's fun in that kit, isn't it? You yes. just open it up and it's all there ready to work. You don't have to plug anything in except the camera. Everything's have, there. Have you gotten any programming yet uh, from Watsonville High? No. 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 Well, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. I have to check with Victor and see if they uploaded something this quarter. I know they were shoot. They were. Oh, they did shoot something. They sent me an email. Okay. So we should see it soon. No, because when I was, you know, listening to the tragedy in Florida at the high school, it was amazing how much <laughs> they were able to reach out to the world with their mm -hmm. digital equipment and digital yeah. facilities at the school. And I think it may make a difference in some people's hearts about what, what needs to be done mm -hmm. or what may be done. It was very impressive mm -hmm. just to see how they were able to use that it's facility. It's very up lifting and impressive to see a lot of those students speak cogently mm -hmm. on their own without mm -hmm. any notes or anything and a lot of those are journalism students so yeah. it's really it's really great to see them be so competent at their age mm -hmm. and under that pressure okay any other questions mm -hmm. so we'll move on to uh, board member or staff requests for specific items to appear on the next meeting agenda any requests from the board? Seeing none, I will move on to the announcements. I would like to at this time thank the volunteers that helped make this production possible. Linda Jadakis, Karen Scott, Gene Kratzer, Richard Gissell, Jim Russo, and Nick Kirkendall. And I think I got everyone. Yeah, you got it. Good.